And this is the entrance to the Grand Destino Tower. And we'll walk inside, see the lobby, which is absolutely gorgeous. Look at how beautiful it is here. Welcomed with this wall of bells, or lamps, sorry, not bells. And everything is just so bright and colorful. Now the reception or the check-in area is going to be on both sides. So I'll show you what this one looks like. Look at how gorgeous the colors are, how bright they are. So this is concierge. And then you have, it opens up into this huge windows overlooking the lower lobby. And then you have the lake below. Look at that. Beautiful towers. These are inspired by Barcelona. Can you see the tapestry with Mickey and Walt in the background? Gorgeous. The light in here, y'all, is just amazing. I can see so many people doing photos here. And then there's that money shot with the fountain out there in the lake. And as you can see, there is some other check-in over here. And they will take your name when you walk in and then bring you over to one of these desks and really complete the check-in process seamlessly. Here we have a, um, a view of the lobby, more from the back area. This is on top of the second floor. But again, these columns are inspired by Barcelona. And then you can see the huge, huge bar down there right up there where the um, people are walking. That is the main entrance, just to give you a sense of scale of where we are. And then panning down and seeing all of the seating areas and then it leads to the lake. This is the Barcelona Lounge that is on the lower lobby level. How beautiful is this, guys? I mean, you can definitely see the influence of Barcelona, Spain, everywhere in this resort, but wow, this bar, <laughs> it's just beautiful. And it is so huge too. Look at how large it is. Um, this is gonna be a really popular place. So we are walking into room 9255, and this is on the 12th floor. So walking in, and it is two queen beds. And what you're gonna see is a corridor first. Oops. This is a connecting room possibility. So you're met with these barn doors that are for the bathroom. Take a peek inside the bathroom over here. I love this tile. This tile is amazing. So beautiful. There is a walk-in shower and you can see you got the toiletries there on the wall. So those are um, not single use. Those are more eco-friendly. And then over here, we actually do have still some of the uh, travel size toiletries that they have available, but the double sinks, look at, I just love the decor. It is really beautiful, really beautiful. So I'll show you some of that. And then turning around, makeup mirror, and the toilet is in a separate room. There's some bold artwork everywhere, which is really, really colorful. I love it. So there is not a necessarily a closet per se. You have this armoire and I'll show you the storage. I got a few things in there is right now. Back up and you've got the safe, which is big enough for a laptop. Woohoo! Um, some storage space for some luggage, ironing board, not a ton of hanging space. I guess a lot of people don't come with dresses, <laughs> but we're here for a media event. Uh, so hangers and then the extra pillow blankets, steam irons. So that is essentially all of your closet storage. You will have some dresser drawers right there that you can utilize as well. So walking through the room, again, this is the two queens. And I have park views, which I'll show you in a minute. If you check out the bells on this lamp, there is, these are very unique and it has everything to do with the Grand Destino story and the Destino film. 
with Salvador Dali and Disney. So I will try to link that film below because you really need to watch that to understand the bells as the decor. You've got a full-size mirror, which is in a bizarre position, position over there, but at least you've got a mirror. And little details such as these lights that pop up. Um, give you a look at the bedding. Really beautiful. And before we look at the view, I'll show you a little bit more around the room. So you've got a little sitting area and welcoming us with the name on the TV screen. Very simple workspace would be great if you were a digital nomad and here doing some work while you're also playing. Um, I'll show you some of the drawers. So again, these three drawers in that armoire are the only storage that you are going to have um, while you're here. You got recycling and trash can. And then there is a Keurig machine, which makes a lot of people happy. It's a Keurig machine and Joffrey's as the coffee, which is Disney World coffee, some Twinings tea. Up here we have ice bucket and some non-disposable cups and glasses, which are great to use. And let me show you this, there's the hidden Mickeys. Love the hidden Mickeys that are part of the decor. It's just like, it blends in so well and yet it's definitely that Disney touch. Bringing you down here, I think this is quartz actually. And then what's in here? There you have a refrigerator. So you get some bottles of water and things like that, sodas. And then turning around, there's this little seat, luggage rack, I guess you could say. And that brings us back into the corridor. Oh, I forgot to show you the view. <laughs> You're probably wondering, where's the view? Uh, so this is the view overlooking the parking lot, which doesn't sound exciting until you look in the distance. And right there is um, Tower of Terror. And so Disney's Hollywood Studios. I can see, you probably can't see with the glare, but let's, if I can point it out right there. It's hard to do. Right there is Star Wars land, Galaxy's Edge. So if they, studios have uh, fireworks, you're going to have amazing views. You can't be guaranteed fireworks views. We've already had that talk with um, a cast member. They don't guarantee it, but as you can see, you're clearly going to see it. We've got Swan and Dolphin here, and then there is Spaceship Earth, Epcot. So I would see Illuminations as well. So this is room 9255 on the 12th floor. I'm also gonna take some video in my friend Amanda, who does vegan Disney food on Instagram. And she has a room on the other side of the hotel, and I will show you that view as well right now. And now this is room 9246, my friend Amanda's room that is on the opposite side of the resort of the tower. So you can see this view is absolutely beautiful as well. Um, I love that it is lake view with the fountains. This is the Three Bridges Bar. Um, behind that is the original part of Coronado Springs. So she's got some of this fancy architectural stuff in front of her room window. And then if you turn around, okay, this would be the main pool, the dig site. Uh, you have some of the original casitas over there. And then off in the distance, right there, that is Magic Kingdom. Um, so you would be able to see some of the Magic Kingdom fireworks on this side. So you're not gonna see all of them in one room and you're not gonna be guaranteed, but they are gonna be there. So we're in the Dahlia Lounge and this is an absolutely beautiful lounge. I will show you the um, view, which is crazy. It's like right there, let me show you outside. Let will get back inside. So this is similar to my room, the overlooking the parking lot, but then you have the studios right out there. Um, Star Wars Land right here. Crazy good. Um, and then Swan and Dolphin. FYI, fabulous place to come drink and watch fireworks. Just saying. 
um, Blizzard Beach is over here and see, oh God, there's, there's Mount Everest, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Uh, so you have all of this fabulous places to eat and drink. And then you get to see so many of the theme parks. It's crazy actually, crazy. All right, so let's go back inside. Um, so once again, this would be a great place to just grab a drink and do a fireworks night. And then when we go back inside, you'll see more references to Salvador Dali, who actually worked with Walt Disney. And that's like a surprising thing that a lot of people don't know. So the Dolly Lounge kind of celebrates that. And you see all of these artworks or pictures of a project that they worked on together. And I, again, I will link that video below. It's kind of hard to see with the glare, but you have a lot of pictures of Salvador Dali. There's one with him and Walt Disney right there. And then if you know much about Dali, you're gonna recognize a lot of influences from his art in this lounge. So I'm going to bring you down there so you can see the artwork and these mirrors. There's the bar itself. And if you come all the way towards the end, again, that artwork. If you know Dali, you know that artwork. And there is the signature bell figure right there that is in the lamps, that is in the rooms that you find outside as well. It's in the video. If you know, if you get to learn more about the history of this resort, you're gonna find that this figure is very much an integral part of the design. And then I'm gonna turn around, give you a longer view. So it is absolutely stunning. And then if you check out these mirrors, again, that's kind of very Dali-esque. Right there. So once again, this is the Dahlia Lounge that is right across from Toledo on the 16th floor of Grand Destino Tower at Disney's Coronado Springs. My name is Michael Seifel. I'm the proprietor for Food and Beverage here at the Grand Mastino Tower. Uh, we're standing here in the magnificent Dahlia Lounge. Uh, so the Dahlia Lounge is inspired by the Disney uh, short uh, Destino, and it is the love story between Dahlia and Kronos. So here on the wall you see kind of uh, some uh, pictures of uh, Walt and Dahlia. Uh, also some uh, paintings from uh, the short over here, the flowing hair of Dahlia, which you also can see uh, in our ceiling. So if you look at the ceiling, uh, you see the inspiration of the flowing hair of Dahlia as well as the tenderline uh, chandeliers. So this is all kind of inspired by uh, the Disney short uh, Destino. So in this lounge, we open at 4 p.m. Uh, until midnight. We are uh, able to enjoy some of our tapas as well as our consuelos. And we actually have a fantastic program, it's called the Gin Tonic Program, which is kind of a, a very popular drink in Spain. Uh, you can choose from over 20 different uh, gins, and we actually uh, make our own saffron orange syrup, which you actually can see over here behind me. And we're actually serving this drink in a beautiful copa de balloon. Um, as well, we are, the inspiration is like throughout, you're gonna see also on our plate. So again, we have a, a melted wine bottle here. So this inspiration came from the famous uh, Disney, uh, sorry, the famous uh, Dali painting, Persistence of Memory. So in our lounge, you have the opportunity to either sit inside or outside. We have a beautiful uh, outside seating area where we have a space for 30 guests. So going back inside, you see some of the columns. So again, all those little subtle pieces, we actually have a Dahlia in the bell here on uh, one of the columns. And in the back, we actually have a surrealistic picture of Dahlia uh, on the floor, which uh, in the silhouette of the bell and in the floating uh, dandelions, which kind of uh, goes right up into the ceiling and you actually see those beautiful dandelion uh, chandeliers. Okay, so this is the bar and this is their famous gin tonic that they are going to be having as their signature dish. You can see that it has that delightful kind of reddish yellow hue and that is from saffron, very Spanish. So these are some of the ingredients and that is the saffron as you can see. Um, so those are some 
examples of that drink. I'm going to show you more of the menu right now. So again, it's going to be very heavy on Spanish uh, delicacies and drinks. Starting with the beer and hard cider. We'll go ahead to the, there it is, the specialty cocktails. And this just gives you an idea of what you can come to Dahlia Lounge and order some of the signature drinks that they are going to be sharing. And then I'll just breeze through some of these. Because probably you're going to be coming for the distinctive spirits and the sommeliers wine menu and these gin tonics. Hi, I'm Robbie Sells. I'm the chef here at Toledo Tapa Steak and Seafood. We're on the 16th floor of Grand Destino Tower, Disney's Coronado Springs. As you can see, we have some amazing, breathtaking views of Walt Disney World. So up here, we're focusing on the flavors of Spain. So we have a, a beautiful tapas bar in the back there. You can see the chefs will be preparing all the food at night and bringing these beautiful tapas. So here we have uh, we have two different types of tapas that are going to be prepared out of there. We have pinchos, which is, means the, the little stick in Spain. So this one we have uh, tortilla española. We have our uh, marinated mussel escabeche with a beautiful saffron aioli in the bottom. And then uh, yellowfin tuna is slowly poached in olive oil with a ramp aioli under that, finished off with some preserved lemon. So moving on to the, to the cazuela. So this little dish is a cazuela. So in these, great little fun shareable tapas. So these are, are uh, herbed goat cheese stuffed patio peppers, charred in our hearth oven and then finished off with our green onion vinaigrette and a 25 year sherry vinegar. And then back here, our pulpo. So this is our charred octopus. It's been braised for six hours, nice and tender. Underneath you'll see beautiful lentils, two sauces on there. You have a nice robust romesco sauce and then a nice uh, tangy zippy uh, chimichurri. Which is really, really fantastic. So here is, uh, I mean, everybody has a cheese board, but we have, we have four ages of Manchego cheese. So Manchego being from La Mancha, Spain. We have a three, six, eight, and a 12 month Manchego cheese. So it's really, it's really fun and cool to, to really taste the difference in those cheeses as they age, the, the complexity, how it, how it changes flavors and textures. So then a couple of the entrees we have um, here today. This is our hanger steak. So char grilled and sitting on some crushed potatoes. We have a nice little fresh salad on top. Uh, shishito peppers charred also. And then two sauces, we have a salsa verde. It's a nice little zip to it. And then aji amarillo yogurt. Kind of cools it down, but also adds a nice little chili flavor. So then our sea scallops. This is one of our popular so far. So our seared sea scallops underneath, you have a fava bean hummus. And then at the garnishes, we have fresh fava beans. We have a, um, an olive tapenade, harissa yogurt, some beautiful roasted baby carrots. And then we have a fun little yogurt powder as well. A little melt in your mouth, a little creamy. It's really, it's really fun. So you can't, you know, you gotta have dessert. So finishing off, we have a crema catalana right here. So beautiful uh, Valencia oranges on there, a little cocoa nib twill for some crunch and a little added chocolate. And this is our tapas bar, it's our Toledo tapas bar. So we have a beautiful cookie, uh, crispy uh, chocolate mousse on the bottom. And then each, each of the uh, domes on top, you have a progression of flavor, starting with a cheesecake and then a lemon, raspberry, chocolate, and then the end, you have a coffee. Sounds delicious. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank so, you. So, like I said, we're, we're focusing on um, the flavors of Spain, ingredients. We're getting either indigenous to Spain or we're importing them from Spain. So really focusing on freshness, seasonality, changing our menus with what is fresh in the moment. And here's a brief look inside Toledo Restaurant. In the middle of the media preview, it gives you an idea of the olive trees and the beautiful ceiling, the expansive windows and the wonderful views. This is inside Toledo Restaurant. Um, look at that olive tree right there. And then this ceiling. Wow, gorgeous. And then behind this wall of wine is a private dining room that you can book. And now this is the Toledo menu. So we got tapas, beverages, and then food. They're in three different sections. I will walk you through a little bit of the menu, give you an idea of what you can find. And then the house boards. 
Coming down to the beverage section. Keep in mind that this is for Toledo. This is the sit-down restaurant that is on the 16th floor. Right across is Grand Destino, or sorry, Dahlia Lounge in the Grand Destino Tower. And they are heavy on cocktails, but there is a Light Bites menu that is going to be here as well. And then we'll go through the food section. And here's a look inside the Kronos Club. This is obviously during media interviews and a media event, but this is the club where if you are a sweet level guest, you can come in and you can have breakfast. There are snacks during the day, heavy hors d'oeuvres at night, and dessert. Obviously, these are the same great views. You can see Disney's Tower of Terror right there. And then this is a glimpse into where the food would be stationed and you have some reading material. Uh, there is beer and cider throughout the day. They are Spanish influenced and then there's a strawberry hard cider as well. Uh, there is always going to be a vegan dish and a vegan option out without having to ask for modifications. So that is going to be for all guests all throughout the day. And then you've got some foods and snacks. This is why you want Club Lounge right here. And then some goodies as well down here, which I love that you can get some chocolates, some sweets, some healthy foods, some kind bars, fruit, and they've got some cookies right now. And then, still continues on, you've got, wow, some really healthy stuff. I love this. Sun butter and banana bread, trail mix, potato chips. Wow. This is really great. And then I'll show you over here, little seating areas, some restrooms, and studios is right there. So this is the view from the back looking out towards Kronos Club. So this is a king room that we're able to view. So a king room only will sleep two. It will have a couch over here, but don't let that fool you. It is not a pull-out couch. Um, and so you have the sofa and the seating area as in the queen room. Everything else pretty much looking the same for the king rooms. This is one of our deluxe um, suites. We have 44 of these located throughout the resort on multiple floors, um, separate living room area. The room does sleep floor, the sofa does pull out, as well as there's a king bed located in the master bedroom. And all of these suites come with access to our Kronos Club Lounge. And Some of our this is the king size bed in the suites. And I was just listening to my friend Amanda asking if there was bathtubs in any of the rooms and it is shower only unless you have an ADA accessible room. So turning over, this is the view. I love this view, quite honestly. I think it's really pretty. And so going into the bathroom, look at that, look at that huge window. I'm loving that with this uh, frosted glass for privacy, but so much light, that's beautiful. These vanities are a little bit similar to what you're gonna find in the queen and the king rooms that we've seen and then just a little bit more space this shower is obviously way bigger than in the standard rooms but a similar look and the toilet in the separate room as well all right so 9150 is the room that we were in and show you a half bath and there is obviously the full bath as well. And then let me show you, look at how great this is. There is a Mickey on the barn door. So again, this was room 9150, a club level suite. We're here in the Barcelona lounge. Want to give you a quick preview of what is currently on the menu. So we have wine selections, uh, more wine, and beer and hard cider. 
And then I'll just flip through. I like how they have these old school like sketches. That's really actually pretty cool. And build your own gin tonic. As we heard in the Dahlia Lounge, the gin tonic is quite the um, signature drink, especially with the Spanish influence. So you're gonna find a lot of the gin tonics around here in all of the bars. We got some more specialty cocktails for those that might not enjoy the gin tonic. And I like how this is different, how it's like just the pencil sketches rather than normally the cocktail menus in some of the other Disney bars where you have the photos or you know the colored um, artwork. And I'll just breeze through some of these other non-cocktail items. And then there is a small amount, oh, we still haven't gotten to the food. <laughs> Distinctive Spirits collection. That's quite the large collection. And I believe we're getting to the food right now. So it is a very, very small offering. And then you can see it starts at 11 a.m. And to enjoy that at this beautiful bar. Here we have three bridges. A nice open air eatery. It is completely open and covered. So don't expect air conditioning, but it is really actually pretty cool today. It's a hot day, but the breezes off the water are really nice. Fabulous views of Grand Destino Tower over there. And this is the bridge that you would walk over, or one of the bridges to come over. So you would have some dining with some amazing views. And then over here we have the bar, which is really beautiful. And I'm going to show you some of these actual really cool Disney touches over here. So you have these like plastered artwork in a fireplace. But then if you zoom in, you've got Donald Duck or the nephew's <laughs> cartoons. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Unexpected Disney touches everywhere. So personally, I always like to start with something sweet. He says dessert has to be last. These are our warm churros and they are delicious. We fry them fresh, we toss them in a little bit of espalette pepper sugar. So there's a little bit of heat to it, but not too spicy. Dip it in the chocolate sauce, out of this world. It's, uh, it's pretty typical in Spain too to, to have your churros with coffee. Um, so here we have one of our coffee specialties. This is our Cafe Bonbon. It's a freshly brewed espresso with a little bit of sweetened condensed milk. Mix that up really well to get your churro in there too. <laughs> Fantastic. Now up here we have our crispy chicken biscuit sliders. Uh, we bake these biscuits fresh every morning. Scallion biscuits, crispy chicken thigh on top, a fresh cabbage slaw with a light vinaigrette on it, a little bit of hot honey and blue cheese spread. Super, super delicious. Very, very identifiable. Kind of similar to those flavors you would get when you have buffalo chicken wings, right? Um, and we have some smoked paprika fries here and a little bit of smoked tomato aioli. So all of our fries are going to come with the smoked tomato aioli. Really great accompaniment for those. Uh, if you want to look right here now, this is a really, really fun dish. Um, it looks great walking through the dining room and sitting on the table. Very easy to share as well. So this is our shrimp corn dogs. We got rid of the hot dog. We replaced it with fresh from Florida, never frozen shrimp. No additives, no GMOs nothing of that nature. Um, it's paired with a little bit of remoulade sauce. So we take that house made aioli, we mix in some chopped pickles, some citrus juice, some spices, as a really great sink to the dish. Now up here, this is our fan favorite spreadable, dippable, shareable item. This is our warm manchego and Oaxaca cheese dip. So we caramelize onions with some jalapenos, we add some milk and some cream, we fold in some aged manchego cheese from Spain, a little bit of fresh Oaxaca cheese from Mexico, Top it with some chorizo, some roasted poblano peppers, freshly cut scallions. It's ooey, it's gooey, it's bubbly, it's delicious. Dip some of the blue and yellow corn tortilla chips, squeeze some lime over the whole thing, and it's great. It's a great thing to drop in the middle of the table and share. Oh, we don't, we don't. It's all about the food and the drink here at Three Bridges. And last but most certainly not least, our curry lentil hummus. This is my personal favorite. Um, so hummus is traditionally made with chickpeas. We omit those and we substitute golden lentils. Um, this, this dish's roots are really inspired by the spice route. Um, there's garlic, there's citrus juice, there's fresh herbs. We top it with a little bit of harissa paste for a little bit of heat. We have a little yogurt raita or cucumber yogurt. It really mellows out that heat. It brings a nice balance to the dish. There's a healthy dose of olive oil on top, some micro cilantro, a little bit of pumpkin seeds. And on the sides to dip, we have our freshly grilled warm naan bread and also a house-made pumpkin seed and sea-salted cracker. 
really, really great. So you got some crunchy, you got some soft bread to go with it. Now, after going through all these, you can really see how we get worldly inspiration on our menu with all these different techniques and flavors and spices. And all of our dishes pair really, really well with our house-made sangria, and our proprietor, Athena, is going to go through making one of those. Chef Anthony, today. thank you. That was incredible. Thank you very much. Absolutely. I can see the thought that went into that. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you so we can showcase our sangria collection. We've been open for a few weeks. We had a soft opening in early June, and our guests have told us that they love our sangria. So I'm excited to show you our offerings. We actually have three different types of sangria. You'll often find a red or a white sangria when you go out, but rosado, we have a rosado sangria, which is rosé. And so guests can choose from any three of these and they can enjoy it in a glass or a pitcher. And each are made here in-house every day. So we use fresh fruit juices, beautiful Spanish wines and Spanish liqueurs. And okay, so I am in my room and we are watching Illuminations over here. It's not the greatest because it's of the focusing but ooh, over there <laughs> we have fantastic fireworks <laughs> oh come on come on oh, illumination <laughs> illumination fantastic and then i'm gonna see star wars galaxy's edge in front of me so this is like awesome there we go so yeah Hey, we are on the 12th floor in my friend amanda's room this time and watching the magic kingdom fireworks so you can honestly see these fireworks, even if you don't have a room on one side or the other, there are um, public areas where you'd be able to see these fireworks displays. And this is quite impressive, I have to say. All right, so this is Star Wars fireworks from my room on 12th floor. And yeah, they're like right in front of us. <laughs> this is, this is awesome. So awesome.